it's it's pilates you're with us in the summer i was going to say the spring it's the summer i don't even know what day of the week it is okay so what i'd like to do is keep working on where we were last week so if you remember we went back to the original repertoire and we did 13 exercises from the original um, format but before we do so it is about taking those checks and balances thinking about your posture and the classic one would be just how you normally stand to just lifting up through the collarbones let's just start there think about nice and tall nice and tall squeezing those shoulder blades back and it's the squeeze of the shoulder blades that we're going to keep coming back to today just make sure you're open lifted up through the chest right did you see that did you see that right okay so Think about alignment, um, feet forward. And again, the other note that I'm going to keep coming back to today is the lift of the arches. So I want you to really think about that connection from the arch of your foot up towards the knee into the groin and up internally, holding and supporting those core muscles. Right, rise in toe to heel just for a little prep and just mobilizing those feet, albeit you've already been up on your feet already today. Okay, be conscious that when you rise, you're rising up into the big and second toe. Baby toes are there just for a little bit of balance. It's all right, we're still in full screen. Don't fiddle, just stop fiddling. <sighs> right, and then shaky, 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 shaky. Okay, shoulders come back and down. Let's just have a little practice here. So I want you to drop your arms to your sides, go along through the neck, Tighten through the core so you feel that little bit of a tuck in of your tail and bring your arms forward. From here, reach them and round out through the back, squeeze the shoulder blades together. So there's two movements, stretching forward without changing anything else in your body. It's that separation of the shoulder blades, part one, and drawing together of your shoulder blades, part two. So reaching forward and squeeze back, reach forward, and squeeze back, got it? Lovely, okay. So this is just getting you going and it's about warming up through the shoulder blades because we're gonna address the shoulder blades in those core movements that we're gonna work through this morning. Relax your shoulders. We're going to take the right arm up into 90 degree angle at the elbow, forearm at shoulder height. And we're just gonna take the arm across the body. It's because we're taking you into a different plane and range of movement, you might feel this differently. So I want you also to think about that stretch in the rib cage. How does the back muscles feel? Try to keep the elbow, shoulder and wrist at the same height. Give it a shake off. Okay, other side. So we come up, we go forward and backwards. Lovely, keeping the elbow, wrist, shoulder at the same height. Not losing that form in your waist either. Think about what's going on elsewhere, but enjoy those stretches you're feeling through the shoulder blades. It's only because I notice sometimes, you know, we, we are, particularly when we're in the garden, where we're using the shoulders a lot, just need to make sure that they're all tight and doing the right thing. Now, watch, slow time, okay? I just want you to go up, back, down, hold. Shoulders come up, back, down, hold. And in that hold, I want you to think about the shoulder blades just kissing each other for a moment in that pause. Up, back, down, squeeze. Up, back, down, squeeze. This will start to fire up the lats or what we'd like to say back fat, um, just to help you understand where we're targeting here. Okay, good, 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 good. Shaky, 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 shaky. Little twist again, malarkey. Lovely. Feet wider than hip width. And I just want you to push, now watch. So it's a push out of the toe, push. So left foot is pushing me to the right side. Right foot is pushing me to the left side, got it? Okay, so we're just doing that for a little while. Again, a couple of things are happening here. Ankle mobility and flexibility. 
transference of weight will start to engage those core muscles a bit better. And now we're starting to wake up around the hip and pelvis. So it's all really valid movements. Now we slow and then we lift. Got it? Okay, so transfer, push, leg lift, rise, hold that, pause, pause, pause. Now, I know you have been doing this a long time with me. So what I'd like to do this now is to shake it up. So if possible, just close your eyes. So it's a transfer of weight, come up onto one leg and close your eyes, even if it's for a moment, because you can start, your senses just go nuts and they start to go, oh, hello. And they can, they can, you can really feel what's going on. Now, if you feel this is just too much, grab a chair or use a wall. You start to get in tune with what's going on with the body and you can feel what's going on with your hips, the arch of your foot, your knee joint, and how everything's moving. So constantly, as you breathe, as you pump blood around your body, every movement you do, there's constant counter movements going on in your body. Lovely, shake that off. That was good, wasn't it? We like that. Okay, so, and then finally, as we get down towards the floor, we're gonna do just a little bit of step back movement so left foot back lean back step forward right foot back lean back step forward now we're going to do this a handful of times and each time we're going to think more about that back knee and go a little lower if that's all too much just get down on the floor okay right okay lovely lovely and eventually we're kneeling. Okay, you might need to adjust it again, Pat, as in the um, angle, because it's pointed towards my knees. Oh, yeah, there you are. Right, good. Okay, so sitting on your knees, I know it's something that um, some of us hate, but it's definitely worth encouraging. Okay, this just allows for a little stretch around the knee joint. Lovely. Okay, so before we go into the next level, what I want you to do is just watch for a minute, right leg, I'm up, I'm just gonna come forward and then I'm gonna just come back. Everything clicked. So up, <laughs> come forward and back. Now, if you want to, you make it more of a around the houses. Does that make sense? Go around the side. You can come straight up and through if you want to, or you can come around the houses. Either way, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's about, again, creating a little bit more movement around the hip joint, a little bit more movement around the knee joint, and also shifting weight, front leg, back leg. So there's lots of reasons why this is really powerful for us. Well done. Okay, on to all fours, hump and hollow. What I might like you to do today, once we've got going, is to close your eyes. Because once we've got going, so the chin to chest is the hump, and I want you to enjoy that stretch. The reverse, we drop the ribs, the belly, and then we really think about getting that chin nice and high, enjoy that stretch. Keeping the arms nice and straight throughout the movement. Be conscious of pushing out of the elbows. Lovely, and use your breath. You don't need to rush it or force it. Just notice that mobility in your back and spine. <clears throat> we will be revisiting this in a little while. Give me two more. Lovely. Okay, so we're gonna come down onto the floor, flip around so we are on our backs and we're going to start with variations of the hundred. Right. Okay, and I say variations because, right, okay, right, because I want us to think about what works for you. So classically, typically, feet and knees together 
or a block or ball between the knees. Part one, okay. Classically, typically chin to chest and then float the arms. We perform five pumps of the arms before rotating for five. So that's 10 done. And if that's enough, just rest off and repeat. So there's lots of variations of this. So if you want to progress as you walk through, such as lifting up one knee or both into tabletop, all very fine. Now, consider your breathing. Remember, small puffs, small inhales. Think about variations, so one leg or both legs, one leg out, really just have a little play with it. But I want you to listen to your body. So if your neck is tired, maybe rest your head and just work through pumping the arms. Focus on a straight elbow again. So we've really got that lengthening through the torso, um, lengthening through the arms and that C shape at the top of the spine. So we're thinking about shortening the abdominals as we finish. So we'll probably have 20 or 30 left to go. Do what you can, that's appropriate for you, okay? But always push the edge, just a little, okay? When you're ready, head down, arms overhead, and just stretch, your knees are still bent. Okay, right, keep your arms overhead, Work with me, feet and knees together. Take your feet and knees to one side, leave your arms overhead. Breathe through any issues here. <sighs> Try and keep your knees together. Up, up, over, over. And see if we can repeat that on the other side. So keep your arms overhead if you can and drop your knees to one side. Now I feel it, I know that one side is always tighter than the other. One side likes to give me a bit more jip than the other. And then release, come back to center. Okay, lovely. So we're going to roll back, literally have a bit of fun, go childlike with it. What I want to avoid is a plop or a farty noise where you've gone pelvis to shoulders and created suction in the small of your back. I want you to really roll through the entire spine. So if your chin is on your chest, that helps you, that lovely C shape. And then as you get more familiar with the movement, float the feet. So this becomes progressive. You can take your knees up into a higher V and roll through the spine and pause at the top of the movement. You can look to extend through the knees as well. Hold on to your bowels, girls. Very farty movement. Try and give me two or three more. Lovely. Nice moves. Now that's probably freaked you out a little bit. So lie down and give yourself a stretch out. Well done, well done, well done. Okay. Before we fully come into one leg stretch, I'd just like to stretch it out. So one leg stretch is here. Remember that, yeah? Okay, but what I want to do first is just target into psoas. So I want you to bring your left knee into chest, hold on to it and stretch out your right leg. Now try and get your right heel onto the floor. Okay, now what I said earlier on about arch your foot, once left knee is into chest, I want you to make your, left, your right arch of your foot come in towards the left side, the midline a little bit. Yeah, it might feel slightly different. So when you lie in this position, your right leg will just flare outwards. What I want you to do is actively draw the inner thigh inwards. Okay, hold it there. Hold it there. Hold it there. And then release. Well done. Right knee into chest. Extend your left leg. So it's kind of just floppy and long. Now what I want you to do is get the inner thigh on the left side to come across towards the right side and hold it there. So it's like a squeeze of those inner thigh muscles. Nice squeeze there. Hold it there. 
Hold it there. It might be that your heel floats a little, just to get it across the midline. Both knees into chest. Okay, right. So today what we're going to do is slide right hand to left ankle and return left hand, right ankle and return. So chin comes up towards the chest. You stretch forward, right hand, left ankle, left hand, right ankle. Got it? So actually what is happening in effect is just a little bit of rotation is starting to form. So we've got a little bit of um, lateral flexion and rotation of the spine. It's quite subtle in the movement. You're actively working through the neck. So me and Pat, she doesn't even know we're going to do this conversation in a minute, but we've already talked to each other about snoring this morning. So we need to keep those next neck muscles strengthened. And part of that is working on this chin lift, do those Pilates moves to get those muscles in the neck nice and strong because they relax. All of this becomes relaxed and floppy. So we need to be a bit more firm around the neck muscles. Does that make sense? Oh, that's fascinating. Lovely. Okay. And from there, we're going to sit up and take the legs nice and wide. Grab a drink. Now, I also talk about today closing your eyes. Let's really tap into our senses. What I'd like us to do is be really conscious of your sit bones. So really just the, 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 the firmest and hardest part of your bottom. Find it and sit on it equally. Now, whilst you're here, what does the rest of it look like? So... <laughs> This is not about how far you can sit with your legs wide. I hate that. It is absolutely one of my big bugbears. When you go to a fitness class and the instructor goes, and then goes as wide as possible and then puts her nose on the floor. You're like, you're just showing off and you're making every other woman in this class feel like poo. Um, and I hate that. Um, or you'll get the one dancer. And I get it. I do get it. But sometimes it just feels more like you're showing off than you're actually doing benefit by the people you're caring for. I'm holding you in this position for a little while. Uh, because you're holding yourself up in self-supporting spine. So if you can, close your eyes and just be conscious of your upper posture. So remember how we started those shoulder blades squeezing together. Net long, shoulders back and down, lifting up through the collarbone. Now, this will take its toll quickly on your hip flexors. So they're working hard to stabilize and fixate right now. So here in your hips, you're going, oh, hold in, hold in, hold in. Now, the arches of your feet just turn out a tad. Lovely. Okay. And now we've got that. The next thing I want you to do you go lovely and long and a little rotate so we're twisting now torso lines up towards left leg shouldn't be a lot in this at all then we twist to the other side so really and truly the sit bones just are on point nothing else is moving your hip flexors are smarting a little okay come back to center now this time we're going to rotate nose over left knee and we're going to just slide the hands forward and land somewhere. Your face and eye gaze will be down towards your knee and thigh. Now I don't anticipate you putting your nose on your knee here. I want you to notice the stretch in the back. Rise up, rotate, settle. And then as you breathe out, slide those hands either side of your leg on the right and, and notice notice any tension any maybe niggles in the back of the hamstring maybe some squishy impingement like oh I don't like that need to shake it off just notice come back up to center send out your arms 
Now we're going to rotate, then right hand to outside left toe. Rise up. Now watch the arm go up and over. See that? Rotate. Left hand, right toe. Rise up and over. Lovely. Okay, rotate. Relax your knees. Come up and over. Lovely. So when I say relax your knees, as you start to fold, what you might notice that your thigh muscles are starting to build tension and you notice your, your kneecaps are going whoop and getting a little bit tight. Try and relax your knees because relaxing your knees, we get to focus the stretch into our back. Lovely, last time on the right. Lovely, lovely. Then we hold on to the back of the knees and just give yourself a moment. And I want you just to lean your chest onto your thighs and hold it there for a moment. Lovely, lovely. <sighs> okay, soles of the feet are going to touch. Take your hands behind you, open up the chest again. So I want you to lift through the chest, squeeze the shoulder blades together and push your hands away. So push your hands away. Um, it's more of a Squeeze your shoulder blades, turn your fingers away from the center of your body. Okay, now bear with. We are here. Now I want you to turn your hands to face in towards your bottom. Is there any chance you could put that fan on me, that one there? Hopefully it's far away enough from the microphone not to pick up. Okay, so same thing, squeezing the shoulder blades. We are going to bend the elbows just a little and push out of the heels of the hands. Now, on the front pack. Lovely. Okay. So it's like a little rock rock. Now, interestingly enough, I notice, and I want you to think about this, as you lower and lift, are you pushing out of one hand? So again, you might need to close your eyes on this. Are you pushing out one hand or both? Does it feel equal and balanced? Do you need to make any adjustments? And when I say adjustments, it might be that you turn your fingers away from you. Um, you'll move less, but you might feel that you're just stretching out through your arms a little. Okay, right. Now, here's the change. Watch me. I am going to look to come down on my forearms and then push back into my hands to get myself up. See that? So down to my elbows, push myself back up. And by doing that, there's a few things going on here. I'm relying on the triceps to activate, so my bingo wings to activate, but also to work in conjun conjunction with my core muscles. So my core is pulling me up from the front, so there's a, um, a pull and there's a press out of your arms at the same time. Got it? Good. Lovely. Okay, and from there, we turn over. Okay, now bear with me and watch me. So we've just warmed up the back of the arms. Now from a box position, I'm lowering the face and pushing back up. So it's inhale to lower, exhale to push away. Slowly breathe in. Use that core breathing to push away. So we're not pushing backwards. We're going directly downwards, directly upwards. Yes, it does feel intense. Inhale into lower, exhale into push away. Three more of these, and you're welcome. Wow. Well done. Well done. Okay, so we're lying down on our bellies. Bear with me. We come down into one leg kick to start with. Um, all I want you to do, so we're just gonna break it down before we look at the technique. And it's simply about popping yourself onto your forearms and drawing 
and bending your knees in a flick. Okay. Now, how do we progress that? I want you to think. Um, I want you to think about firstly avoiding caving in. So your chest is lifted. Your back muscles are doing the work. From here, we're thinking about the arches of the feet again, and it's a heel to bum. Pointy toe on rest, heel to bum, boom, 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 da-da. Got it? So it needs to feel quite sturdy where your whole body gets a shock from it or a ripple from the earthquake, that is heel to bum, boom. And the whole body will just shunt forward a little. Okay, now we change this. We go three, two, one, point. And on the point, the knee comes away from the ground. So three, two, one, point. Three, two, one, point. So there's a lot going on from hip to knee, back of thigh, front of thigh. So three kicks. Point left leg. So you're going to be um, pushing your pubic bone into the ground a little. Now, what I'd like you to do is try and keep your knee off the ground through the whole thing. So there's a lift, or what we call hip extension. So there's a whole leg lift, three flicks, one, two, three, a point, and then a settle down. So lift, three, two, one, point, and settle down. Keep going. What you might feel the benefit of is um, stretching, lovely stretches, top of thighs into lower pelvis. But you might also feel the benefit of the back of your thighs, your hamstrings really firing into the movement. So both are really nice. Lovely, lovely. Last time. And then push yourself back into downward dog. <clears throat> Lovely. Downward facing dog. Pat, time, time. 25 two. Oh, lovely. Ah, okay, so I find this car, this carpet is really, um, I can't win. The yoga mat slips on it and then it's slippy when I don't have the yoga mat. Okay, so the idea here, settle into this position. We're going to be here for about a minute. Ah, and listen to your body. Do you feel more comfortable coming up onto your the balls of your feet? Where are your ears? How triangle do you feel? Are the heels of your hand pushing your body backwards? So we're really thinking about how high is your the, the tip of your tail how high is that and what do we need to do to really get that beautiful triangle shape activated in your body okay now if you want to you can pop your knees down and just have a little watch okay what i'm going to do i'm just going to open up through your spine a little so from downward dog I am going into a leg lift and a knee bend. Got it? That's all, which will become an open and a little twist. So I don't feel safe on the other foot. So that's the, my dodgy foot. So I don't feel I'm on the ball of the foot. Got it? Right. Let's have a little go. The idea is you're lifting your leg um, in lovely alignment and then you change the alignment by allowing that twist. So it's three-legged dog with a bent knee, essentially. Lovely. Wrists are feeling it, huh? Yeah, 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 in the forearm, okay. Okay, so you can modify, you can look to do it on your forearms. Um, and make a triangle shape with your um, wrist or forearms and it will feel slightly um, different. But we're still hitting similar targets. Okay. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Yeah, shaky, shaky, shaky. 
well done. Release, relax. Good job, everyone. That was really good effort. Okay. So hopefully what we're about to do next is going to be a bit more of an improvement on last week. So we look to do some bridges. So the exercises we've just done all help us take us to this moment in time. Okay, so we were talking about bridges last week and we were using our hands to anchor under our hips, okay? So better with, I know I feel like I'm saying it a lot today, but it's kind of like, it's almost like we're coming to a reveal. So the first thing we need to think about is, is coming up into those bridges and how does that look and feel? And then it's using your hands to really get some leverage and your hips nice and high. So, and some of us are very good at tucking the elbows right the way under. I, I can't seem to do that. It's never been a skill of mine. One side likes it, the other side kind of hates it. But the idea is that the hips are nice and high and cradled into your hands. Got it? So just practice on that for a little bit. Lovely, lovely. And then see if you can put your heels down. So it's almost like your legs are being suspended. Okay, now from here, relatively close together, one leg comes up, points to ceiling, and then taps down. So it's half tabletop, knee extension, half tabletop, so gravity wants to kick in really focus on keeping the hips high because this is challenging your hamstrings the back of the legs really tuck your hands under your hips hold your bum in the air open the chest squeeze those shoulder blades together Tuffy, isn't it? What if we did three flicks to ceiling, two flicks to ceiling, one flick to ceiling, foot down, switch sides? Lovely. Two more, so one more set each side. Well done. Release, relax. Draw your knees into chest. Give yourself a bit of a hold. Okay, so from here we're going to have a look at two things. Double leg stretch and then one leg circle. Double leg stretch to start with, we, um, we come out of a tabletop position. Okay, now if you're finding the load is too much into your back, stacks of modifications one of them will be taking one leg instead of two so bear with me and watch i'm just going to whip through variations so you can see i'm starting to use my arms and legs and what you can do the lower your legs are the more intense it is into your center Eye goes to your toes if possible. Really squeeze your thighs. So think about straightening off your knee as you extend the leg. So the whole of the front of the body is tight and engaged and talking to each other. Think about the elongation of the legs. Now, if the load is too much, you can take your legs higher. So you don't have to go to skirting board height. So this is core working, upper body connection to lower body. Lovely. Give me six more. I've no idea. Time. Lovely. Well done, and then rela relax. We good? Good. 
Okay, so I'm moving. So you're probably going to miss me on the camera a little bit, but I just need to be able to demonstrate fully. Okay, so what I'm going to do is look at the circles. So <laughs> there's lots of schools around this. When I first trained, drawing the circle on the ceiling was what you needed to do with one leg circle. But as you do that, there needs to be stillness on the static side. If you want to, you can bring that circle in across the midline out to the side. You might notice your whole body is rocking with you. So I want you to think about that stillness where possible. Another variation is to extend the leg and see how that feels. I notice that as soon as I start to extend the leg, I can feel that in my back and I feel my alignment shifting in my back. So I have to work quite hard on that stillness. So we're just playing with one side. Oh, and it feels like bubble wrap. Oh, it's a lovely feeling. We're still on one side, one direction and then the other. Oh. So all of this, this is core conversations, two legs. So there's a natural strengthening going on here in this movement. So just stay with it. And we're overloading it because we're staying on one side. By now you're quite tired. Your hip flexors are singing a little bit. So just really hold the faith. And now switch. <laughs> so again, just keep it small to start with. Make it bigger. Notice your breathing. Notice the stillness, the arch of the foot on the still side. Where is it? Where's your inner thigh? One direction and the other. Oh. Straight leg if you want to. Use your breath. And then relax. Ooh, okay. So bring the soles of your feet together. Let your knees drop out. Squeeze your shoulder blades um, together as well. Ah, hands overhead. Stay here for a moment. Just let your hips and groin just relax. So we always talk about, we don't always talk about it. Um, what we need to think about, you hold on to your pelvic floor quite strongly uh, when you exercise. Now we're just going to try and relax it because what we don't want to end up having is creating an imbalance because you're holding on to your pelvic floor all the time. So we need to just give ourselves a moment to just relax off your pelvic floor. Not to the point of your pre-wee tingle. Oh. Just be conscious there's a lifting and a lowering. So let's just practice that for a few minutes. Think about fully relaxed pelvic floor, relax through your bottom. Totally just, okay. Now I want you to think about drawing gently, inwardly, upwardly. Got five levels. So from zero, feel that contraction starting around the perineum, lifting up, pulling the belly button into the backbone and drawing everything in your anatomy upwards and under your ribs. Let it descend in the same method. <sighs> using your breath and feeling that sense, that sensation of just relaxation coming out. Connect, contract, lift in, lift up, pull in, pull up, use your breath. And like a wave, let the breath go, release the pelvic floor and then let it rest out. Let's do this one more time. So connect, in, 
noticing, lifting, feeling that change in the front of your abdominals, that lift under your ribs, and then the releasing. Oh, a bit of crampons. Okay, well done. Okay, what I'd like you to do, if possible, is to take your right ankle by your hand. So hand grabs, right ankle pulls it into bum. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Now, if possible, you're going to draw the right knee towards the floor as your right heel or the right arch starts to slide onto the floor. Can you see that? So your knees cave it in. So, and your hand is assisting it, okay? The next thing I want you to do here is to take your left arm and then out into the far left diagonal. We're going to extend the left leg. And your right hand is going to come round, grab the left wrist and pull to the right side. So you're going to actively press your right knee towards the mat. Well done. Keep pulling on that wrist and then release, relax. Oh. Okay, other side. Right knee's bent. Use your left hand, grab your left ankle and pull your left ankle up towards the left side of your body, allowing the left knee to drop down towards the carpet. <sighs> right arm into the top diagonal. Right leg, straighten off. Okay. Okay, now left hand grabs right wrist. Left hand pulls his side on the floor. <laughs> Where? <laughs> <It's stupid. laughs> we weren't supposed to do that. Right, you're gone. Right. <laughs> we were str <laughs> we're stretching out. <laughs> so that was the time he was grabbing the right wrist. Oh, that would have been in my hair. Oh, that was nasty. Once again, Pat saved the day. She yeah. did not save the day. Oh. Right, okay. Now, we used to do this quite a lot when we were um, developing the, the Shiro method, pilability. Same thing, because I just think we need to keep opening up around the hip and the waist. So what I'm looking for is us to flip over onto our bellies. It is now we've already worked through the movement. So arms optional, depending on how your boobs feel. I'm looking for left leg to right hand. So left leg comes round to the hand and back again. And we switch sides. So right leg, so the knee bends, we lift it, we bring it over. And with a little bit of repetition, what you'll notice, your range of movement <laughs> increases. I don't even know if I'm on the camera. <laughs> now, things that I've learned, play with your arms, whether your palm is up or down. You don't have to rush this. Everything is gonna be stretching, moving and, um, and breathing. Lovely. Yeah, the boobs get in the way, so you choose where you want your arms. Lovely. Doesn't that feel nice? Good, good. Okay, push up, kneel up, left leg comes forward. We kind of started here earlier on. 
Now, because we've just done some hip opening, what I'd like you to do, your right leg comes in. Does that make sense? So instead of pointing in a straight line, it comes in. Okay, now what we're going to do is think about the baby toe on the left, and we're just going to come forward and back a minute. So that should feel whoo, quite strong. Okay, forward and back. If you just pull up the level a minute, because at the moment you just got the top of my head. Right, okay. Lovely. Strong, in it? Okay, now here's the change. So you're turning to face me. That right front leg is now stretching out and you're coming down onto your elbows. Now, you can do this in a few different ways. You can sit back bottom to heel or you can really get into it by shifting your weight forward and see how that feels. It might be because you, your left leg your left leg's extended. It might be that your left arm comes over to the right side a bit. Have a little play. And then when you're ready, come up. We're going to switch sides. So now it is your right leg extends and your back leg whips in. Okay, and we're just going to come forward and back. Again, it's quite, it's quite a tough stretch into the groin. But you might notice new um, sensations here. Focus on the baby toe, the knee traveling towards the, the baby toe rather than caving in. Okay. To come forward. Okay. And that's the change. So the leg comes forward, bottom back, and we stretch out. Work if you can to get the baby toe or the foot flat. And either rock forward or put your bottom onto your heel. Relax your kneecap. Lovely. And again, if you want to, right hand can cross over to the left side. Just to really get that lovely stretch through the lats. Well done. Okay, lovely people. So find yourself in a comfortable position. We are going to do some relaxation with you now. Where's the blue roller? There it is. Okay, so make yourself comfortable whether you're sat or lying down. Stressing the importance of relaxation. Um, for your central nervous system. Again, um, just a little adjust if you can. A little, hello, camera, camera woman. Can you just <laughs> Thank you. Okay. What do we know? What do we understand here? We go ah, breath first. So breath is that connection. The power of the parasympathetic nervous system enables us to heal well. So we need to tap into our relaxed state. It's so important to do this, particularly as we all get older. So think about first, hide your breathe. Pat, you're right. Look at me. And then second place, I want you to think about sending the breath down into the belly. Now slow the rate of the breath. Now what we do, we're going to go on a little journey over the rainbow. 
just want you to visualize being sat on a warm beach. Feel warm sand on your toes. Feel a breeze. Feel happiness. Sigh. This is when you really let yourself relax and let go. Visually connect with your views. Imagine the sea in front of you, a beautiful blue sky, a horizon. Maybe the surface of the sea, how the sun reflects on it. Where is the sun in the sky? And just to remind you, you're safe, you're well, you're in a happy place. You're just tapping into beautiful memories. Maybe listen to the sounds around you. Wildlife. The sound of the wind in the leaves of the trees that surround the beach. The crackle of the wave on the sand and how you can hear the waves close to you just trickling back in. That rhythmic, melodic sound of gently rolling, pushing waves. Think about how you're feeling right now. Sense of calm. Be connected with the sounds of nature and humanity. Life around you. And draw it in. Because these little mini holidays they're very good for lifting your spirits, your serotonin and your dopamine. Happy hormones that make you feel good. Reflection is so important for us. You take your awareness and notice your body, how you feel, any areas where tension is being held. Just work on letting that go. Just feel that sense of well being around you. Once again, a long sigh. Create some movement to your fingers and toes. Adjust what needs adjusting. Bring yourself into a seated position when you are ready. Taking your arms out slowly out to the sides, squeezing your shoulder blades. Imagine there's weights in your hands. Bring your hands back in front of you to center. 
Let's go out to the side again. Come up into a high V. Let the arms drift down sideways as you breathe out. Let's do that one more time. Inhale into a high V. Exhale, a drop in your hands, bring in your hands together and into a round of applause. Well done, well done, take care. Yay! Well done, lovely people. Okay, so we'll stop recording.